welcome back to my channel this is part 2 of the population series which is chapter 6th in your geography ncrt book of class 9th so in part 1 we basically talked about why we should study population as a part of geography then we talked about the three main points of population that one should know the first point which is the population size and distribution was discussed now let us come to the second point which is population growth and processes of population change so what is population growth change in number of inhabitants in a specific period of time say katak city the population of katak city is say x in 2001 it is y in 2011 so to know the growth you have to subtract y from x then only you can know how many people have been added to the population of the city so the change in number of inhabitants is usually calculated in 10 years of time to show a more accurate and stable trend here is a very important line india has a large population so when a low annual rate is applied to a very large population it yields a large absolute increase so it means that the population of the country is growing but definitely not in the way it was growing say in 1970s or 1960s however even a small increase will reflect in an absolute increase because india is such a large country so say every day also if only one child is born in say 20 families then also it will lead to a huge huge growth so it will show proper you know balancing trend say after many many years or in the long run so despite india's rate of population growth decreasing still the absolute increase is increasing okay so growth rate is increasing but in a declining trend for instance in 2001 also population was increasing 2011 also population was increasing and say 1981 also population was increasing but the rate of growth or the speed has definitely decreased in 2001 and 11 as compared to 1981 so the rate or the pace of population is decreasing but the population as a whole is increasing so what do we know in as growth rate growth rate is nothing but the rate or the pace of population increase which is calculated by percentage per annum so we discuss population is increasing but growth rate is decreasing now the prop what are basically the processes of population change or growth so there has to be some processes or some way in which the population is changing so obviously out of common sense you can say the birth and the death definitely adds on to the dynamism of a population so say your family has four members if a brother is born in your family you become five so that means your population increased say you are family of six members four of you all and your grandmother and grandfather suppose your grandfather dies then you will immediately become five so birth and death plays a very important role in the population change so when we talk about birth in geography we talk about birth rate to be more precise so what is birth rate it is the number of live births per thousand persons in a year so if there are thousand person compared to the thousand person how many live births take place based on that we know about birth rate so the birth rate is always very high it is declining but so as we talked about population and rate of growth of population so similarly birth rate is definitely high but it is also declining but it is not very noticeable okay next coming to the concept of death rate so it is the number of deaths per thousand persons in a year so these two are basically 
the natural reasons for an increase in population of a country or a state or a district or even a family. Birth and death. Birth rate and death rate are reasons for natural increase of population. So, if you need to know the change in population or the growth in population, you have to see the difference between the birth rate and the death rate. So, you exactly need to know that how many people survived. Another interesting point that you should know over here is with time the birth rate is high but still it is declining that means people have become more conscious they do not want three four five eight children they are going for maybe one two or maximum three children so people are controlling the birth rate but at the same time the death rate which initially used to be very high that means lot of people were dying per thousand number of the population now the death rate has also declined now, why has the death rate declined? The death rate has declined. Sorry for my fumbling. Okay, the death rate has declined because you should think for some time. The reason is of medical intervention. There are so many medicines, so many doctors, so many surgeries. So, people have a greater chance to live unlike yesteryears where any disease, you know, it just came as an invitation for death. So, the population will definitely increase, birth rate is increasing, you know the rate may be lower but still it is increasing, the death rate is decreasing, that means people are dying less which I am not saying is a bad thing but the population is definitely increasing for these two factors. Okay, now let us move on to a man-made factor that leads to population change and it is called migration. So, what is migration? It is the movement of people across regions and territories. So, suppose you are in Katak and you, your family, you all, you know, move down say to Trivandrum in Kerala. So, you all are migrating from one state to another state. Suppose you are in a village, you are moving from one village to the city, you are migrating within the state. Suppose your uncle stays in Bombay and he goes to London, that is known as international migration. So anything which happens within the territory, it is internal migration. It does not change the size of population. It may change the composition of population. For instance, if your uncle moves from Odisha to Delhi, the population of the country would still remain the same because he is still within the country. But you should remember, suppose he is aged and he moves from Odisha to Delhi, that means Odisha is relieved because one dependent person has gone away. But in Delhi, a burden comes because he is a dependent person. That means he will depend on somebody for the resources to stay in his, you know, life or whatever. So, that is internal thing. International is if somebody moves from one country to another, that will definitely reflect in the population. The population will either increase or decrease by international migration. So, if you see migration happens basically for two factors, one is the push factor and the other one is the pull factor. So, what is the push factor? Say so you are in Katak and you are like, no, I am not liking the colleges here, I am not liking the place here, I need to go to Delhi and study. So, that is a push factor. You feel that there is nothing in Katak, that is why you want to go to Delhi and study. What is the pull factor? Everything good is there in Katak. Still you feel Delhi has more opportunities and that is why you move to Delhi. So Delhi or Bombay being the Maya Nagri, they attract you. So many people from the village, they come to Katak because Katak attracts them. Katak makes them feel that, yes, I have so many jobs for you. Come and stay with me. Okay. So this is the push and pull, pull factor. The push and pull factor also changes population size and population composition. You should know the difference between size and composition. Size would only be the number. So, 10 will be 9 or 10 will be 20. Composition means the 10 can be 9, but that 9 will all be working population. The 10 can be 20, but the 20, all of the 20 will be dependent population. So, even if the size increases, if the composition is good enough, it is not a problem. But suppose the size also increases and the composition is not 
यू नो कंड्यूसिव फॉर इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ एंड अ गुड लाइफ स्टाइल देन इट इज डेफिनेटली नॉट अ वेलकम चेंज सो क्विकली फी रिवाइज वी डिड पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ रेट ऑफ पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ देन बर्थ रेट डेथ रेट एंड माइग्रेशन सो दिस finally sums up this section on population growth and processes of population change i'll see you in the third part